Hello, hello, and welcome to Who Ate It First, a food history podcast with a twist. I am Kendall Runquist. And I'm Logan Runquist. And what do you have for us today? Oh my goodness, Kendall. I have a lot of knowledge for you. Bring it on. I have a question. What's up? Are you hungry for some knowledge? I crave it. Me too. Thirst for it. (laughs) Me too. You think you know this item that I'm going to tell you. You think you know it, but you probably don't. Okay. My subject for this week was Caesar salad. I saw a YouTube video and it was titled National Foods We Got Wrong. And I was like, oh, really? Well, turns out I know absolutely nothing. And this kind of made me rethink everything that I thought I knew about food. And well, just everything, really. I started to have a little bit of a, of a life crisis because I just thought I knew so many things. And turns out I, I didn't. So I think lots of people just assume they know, oh, Caesar salad is named after Julius Caesar, the yeah, that guy. Roman emperor. Three countries claim some kind of ownership on the birth of this notorious dish. And they are Italy, the USA, and Mexico. Isn't that random? But most likely, the creator had some connections to all three. And we know for sure that this man is named Cesar Cardini. And his it's probably pronounced Cesar because it's Italian. But I'm just going to say Caesar just for continuity's sake of the, the name of the salad. So my sources today are an article on Delishably by Rupert Taylor, and an article on the BBC Travel website by L. Sasha Gora. So, who ate Caesar salad first? Well, Mr. Caesar Cardini himself, I guess technically, it was named after him. So, Caesar is from Italy, and he came to the U.S. to start up some restaurants along with his brother. He started in California in 1919, but with the start of Prohibition, his businesses weren't doing too well. So, he moved down further south to Tijuana, to wait out Prohibition and continue making money as a restaurateur. So that's kind of how we have the connection to all three. So born in Italy, came to the U.S. to make money in the restaurant biz, and with Prohibition, he could no longer sell alcohol, and that was, of course, the largest draw to restaurants because people would want to go out, have a drink. And so he was like, this ain't working, so they moved to Mexico. The business was hugely successful, with Americans crossing the border in droves looking for a few shots of booze. (laughs) (laughs) As you do. As as you do. Picture it. July 4th, 1924. Independence Day, as it were. It was a hot Friday, and hordes of people descended on Tijuana to celebrate the holiday weekend. People are just having a high old time eating, drinking, vacationing. And at Caesar's Restaurant, they were doing really well for themselves. But as the story goes, they were running low on supplies. This is when Caesar looked around in his kitchen and got creative. He had eggs, garlic, Parmesan cheese, romaine lettuce, olive oil, and a few other scraps. With the flair of a showman, he descended on customers' tables and before their very eyes improvised what became the Caesar salad. (laughs) So I will take a break in here to say that history is a little fuzzy on exactly who created this thing. What you, what I just said is the Caesar salad. Like, who exactly created it? Some sources say it was actually his brother, Alex, technically created oh. it. So Alex started working in the restaurant business at the age of 10 in Italy before becoming a pilot in World War I. And then he moved to Tijuana in 1926 to join his brother. Quote, first known as Aviator Salad, it then became popularly known and copied as Caesar's Salad. End quote. Alex supposedly added the anchovies, which Caesar did not approve of. So that is kind of one iteration of, okay, maybe Caesar technically didn't create the salad, but it was his brother, so still in the Cardini family. So is there a debate between whether or not anchovies is an accepted item inside of Caesar's salad dressing? I don't know if it's really widely debated just because there's so many iterations of what you can have and like it's derived throughout history. So in all of the recipes, there's slight variations. Mm -hmm. So like if you're going with the story that Caesar created the salad, no anchovies. 
if you're going with sort of the popularized one that has anchovies and that could be his or that could be alex's gotcha so, i didn't know if this was the same chili style throw down or beans or no beans in your chili oh. kind of thing where people fight over it gotcha no i don't think so and it because it was really what he had on hand i think people kind of took to that do i have anchovies on hand no that's all right. Do I? Great. Add them in. You know, that kind of a thing. Um, yeah. So research is like a little bit fuzzy, which is, I don't know, funny to me. I didn't realize that food history was quite so, I don't know, not exact. It's not really an exact documentation process as like academia. I mean, academia has faults too. But it just surprised me because I was like, well, what's the answer? And they had interviews with Cesar Cardini's daughter. I think her name is Rosa. And she, I mean, she's elderly now because this was in the 20s. And so she was saying that, like, it was her father for sure. But, like, they interviewed somebody later who worked at his restaurant. And she's like, oh, it was, you know, the other one. So nobody, like, I don't know. There was an exact note taking happening. So I guess this will just remain unsolved. <laughs> So also, in addition to the brother, there's also a claim that Livio Santini, a young Italian working in the Cardini kitchen, concocted the salad based on a recipe that his mother had used back home. Or also one of their other business partners, Paul Maggiora. Anyway, no matter who created it, it was all in that Cardini kitchen. So it could be one of four people. The Caesar theory is that the one that sticks the most and seems to be generally accepted. Gotcha. So throughout the 20s, American film stars flocked to Tijuana for booze and word soon spread about Caesar's amazing salad among the Hollywood elite because nothing was more fashionable than a salad in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> so people like Clark Gable and Jean Harlow traveled to Tijuana to try it. And even acclaimed American chef Julia Child described one of her earliest restaurant memories as venturing to Caesar's restaurant and having him serve it to her and her family tableside, which I kind of love that. I mean, I love Julia Child anyway, but I thought that was so fun. And it started to go viral, as we say today, in the 40s. Gourmet Magazine called the dish the gastronomic highlight of the current moment. And in 1953, it was crowned as the greatest recipe to originate in the Americas in 50 years. And that was by the International Society of Epicures in Paris, <laughs> which is saying a lot because that sounds pretty hoity-toity. And so to say that Americans created something good, like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> at least like coming out of America. Cardini was an American, but something tasty to originate from America. Wow, how novel. <laughs> So you can visit Caesar's Restaurant Bar today it's called Hotel Caesar's in Tijuana, where it's still open and still serving the delicious salad. The family also bottles and sells their dressing. On their menu, it's listed as Ensalada Caesar. I'm going to repeat that because that was not words. Listed as Ensalada Caesar. And a lovely tableside performance commences when the waiter rolls over the salad cart. And they're called Ensaladeros. One who makes the salad. Awesome. So when the appointed ensaladero server mixes everything together with precision, and everything has stayed pretty much the same except for one ingredient. Today, most recipes call for a splash of lemon juice, and not the fresh lime juice that ensaladero stirs into the tableside salad. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica defines it as a dish with lemon. But in English, lemon sounds really close to the Spanish word limón, which means lime. It's actually also the Spanish word for lemon, which makes it really, really confusing. <laughs> but one of the oldest restaurant employees that I mentioned before, she remembers it being made with Mexican limes, the really small, little, really vibrant limes. So there you have it. Clear as mud, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but I loved this quote. But one thing is for certain. An Italian immigrant invented one of the U.S.'s most famous salads in Tijuana with romaine lettuce named after Rome. 
It's a cross-cultural food, truly a mixed salad, and a dish worth crossing borders for, end quote. So, there you have it. That's actually really interesting because growing up, I every time we go out to restaurants, you always get a seasoned salad. It's just so commonplace now. I know. That I didn't even really think about where it came from. It just seemed like everybody had it, and I didn't give it really two thoughts. So that's really interesting that it actually, to learn where it originated from. Yeah. So, cool. It's bananas. That kind of blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, surely something as simple as a Caesar salad came from Rome. No. Technically, no. Born in Mexico. Yeah. That's so cool. But anyway, so now we're going to go make it. Yeah. Let's go make a Caesar salad. (laughs) We're following Jen Seagal's recipe on Once Upon a Chef. I've got my anchovy paste at the ready. Hello. We're in the kitchen. We are in the kitchen. So we're still using that recipe. And written on there, she said, unlike authentic Caesar salad dressings, which are made with olive oil and thickened with raw eggs, this one has a mayonnaise base. So she was saying that she has kids and her kids are like squeamish about eggs. I don't know if I really feel comfortable touching a raw egg and eating a raw egg. I don't really want salmonella today. So we're using a mayonnaise base. Before you keep going, I do have a disappointing thing to tell you then about raw eggs. What? Salmonella? I'm going to be giving you some on the Christmas episode because we're going to be talking about eggnog. Is it the whole thing or, or just egg whites? Egg yolks. Okay. You can add the egg whites, but I'm just doing the yolks. Okay. Little teaser. I'll mentally prepare myself. So this makes one and a third cups or about 10 small salad equivalent. 10 small salads. And what defines a small salad? She called it like a starter salad. So imagine uh, you're that? at a restaurant and you get a starter. I gotcha. You're going to need garlic cloves, anchovy paste, lemon juice. Ours expired, so we have to use vinegar. So if you don't have lemons like we don't, then you can just sub with a white a white vinegar. Yeah, our lemon got a little moldy before this episode. We've only had those groceries for not even three days, so I'm not super sure what happened, but okay. Anyway, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, mayonnaise, or eggs, Parmigiano-Reggiano, grated, The original recipe, he like grated in big chunks. Gotcha. So not the powdered, shakeable kind. Right. Not the fake kind. Not the fake kind. (laughs) Salt and pepper. So in a medium bowl right here, we have chopped up our two small garlic cloves. And we're going to whisk that together with the anchovy paste. It looks gross, but it tastes pretty good. It's really salty. I licked my finger. (laughs) The lemon juice and Dijon mustard and Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> that came out so weird. <laughs> Listeners, and Kendall, have you seen the frozen honey challenge on TikTok? No. Basically, how it came out of the bottle just now is that, so literally you take your bottle of honey, you stick it in your freezer, and because it's viscous, it keeps its shape when you squirt it out of the bottle. So people had take like kitchen scissors and cut it or just bite it like a like an apple and it kind of looks really disgusting. Yeah. But so that picture good. that but this mustard, it literally came out of the bottle like that. <laughs> <laughs> in a in its constant viscous state, it just came out of the bottle that way and it was gross. <laughs> like a poopy. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> So I have my garlic anchovy paste, lemon juice substitute, Dijon mustard, and Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to whisk. Okay, I just wanted to whisk that just a little bit, not fully um, emulsified because we have to do our mayonnaise. She says best quality such as Hellman's best. Oh, we actually did get Hellman's, actually. I thought we got uh, just generic brand. We only do the best here. Yeah, I love that she was like, best quality. Like, as if I 
am cultured enough to know what a best quality mayonnaise is. She probably meant a brand that's real mayonnaise and not something like Miracle Whip that's oh. not actually mayonnaise. What is it? Uh, it's a lot of things, but it's not actually mayonnaise. That's actually why Hellman's on their bottles, they say real mayonnaise. It's to just clarify that it's not fair. All right, so we've got our cup of mayonnaise. I'm and then we are going to... Salt and pepper. Just a little bit of salt and I'll taste it. Just a note here on this recipe, it looks like she used the... I'm assuming it's really finely grated Parmesan, the kind that comes in the shaker, because she puts her cheese inside her dressing, just to note. Ah. So we are using like the the big shaved pieces because that's more traditional. So doing a little bit of a of a mix. So using hers mostly, but we're not putting the Parmesan cheese in the dressing. Okay, so the dressing is done. We looked up a very basic recipe for croutons or croutons, depending on your persuasion. <laughs> this is on rachelcooks.com. We're preheating our oven to 375 degrees. We're not adding as much seasoning to our croutons as she is because, I don't know, this, it seemed like Caesar was a purist. I don't think he added any seasoning to his croutons, at least judging from the pictures that I saw on the website. So I think we're just going to pop those bad boys in there for about 10 minutes, olive oil, and a little bit of Italian seasoning, just a little. And some salt and pepper. And some salt and pepper. And then we're good to go. We're going to arrange our romaine lettuce, not in the tiny pieces, the big leaves. It's a leaf salad, not the cut up choppy choppy. Gotcha. Going to arrange them very finely. I believe I saw the original was arranged like the stems were outward. So it's like a big oh, okay. circle. That's kind of cool. I like it. So I'm going to attempt to do that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Yeah. So we are going to whip up those croutons, finish making the salad, and we'll give it a taste. And we will be back to rave or roast this recipe. Hey, we're back. We're back. <laughs> So, rave or roast, Kendall? How was the Caesar salad? It was really tasty. I liked it. Thank you. Even though we had to replace the lemon with the vinegar, it was good. Yeah. Turned out, it still tasted like a Caesar salad dressing. It definitely did. And I would say better than just like your goofy, you know, hole in the wall restaurant down the street. Yeah. Better yeah, than... It was, it was good. Better than like... Better than a mediocre Italian restaurant, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Good. This did really make me want to go to the original restaurant, though. Yeah, Hotel Caesar in Tijuana. I really want to go as well. But this podcast, we're building up a list of places to go now. Because <laughs> we need to go check out the French Fry Museum. Yes, and now we need Belgium. to also go check out the original Caesar salad at Caesar's Hotel. Yes, Hotel Caesar. Hotel Caesar. <laughs> yes, we definitely do. I hear Tijuana is a nice uh, little vacation spot. So what do you what do you rate this? Do you rave it or do you roast it? Definitely rave it. And I think I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10 chef's kisses. Nice. <laughs> you, get, you get seven chef's kisses and then half of a lip. <laughs> A Top very, lip or bottom lip? Your cho dealer's choice. Ew. <laughs> it's a very strange way to do a chef's kiss. Got it. How about you? I'm thinking still. The The reason why I said 7.5 is it was really good. It's definitely much better than oh, probably the majority of Caesar salads that I've had. But in my opinion, there are still some that I've had that have beaten them out, beaten that one out. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I will also give it, I think I'll give it eight chef's kisses out of 10, just because I feel like I could reasonably make that dressing all the time, and my side salads would be much better than just using a generic store-bought 
brand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's super easy to make. Yeah. Super easy. Really tasty. Honestly, I think if the garlic had sat in there for a little while longer, it wasn't quite as garlicky as I was expecting. I think by tomorrow, like stick your finger in our leftovers. I bet you it's going to be significantly better. And the same with like having to swap lemon juice. That probably was part of the issue. And yeah, I was thinking about the best Caesar shells that I've had at like really fancy places. They have anchovies, like full, fully mm, yeah. anchovies. Yeah. I don't know if that necessarily makes or breaks it. I mean, obviously we didn't get the experience of having it table side either. Yeah. I would be curious to see if mixing up some Parmesan in it would add anything as well. Yeah, we could try. Yeah. Experiments for next time. Yeah. Definitely full anchovy. I think you can find them. I think they're just in the canned tuna aisle. But this recipe specifically stated paste. So yeah. that's why I did that. So she could sneak it in for so her kids wouldn't notice? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's correct. But yeah, so a little more lemon. Maybe try Parmesan cheese, anchovies. And yeah. Also, this head of lettuce was astronomically large. I don't know why the leaves were humongous. So perhaps eatability and, you know, using it as a, ve- like using oh, yeah. the lettuce as a vehicle into your mouth. It was enormous. Yeah. We attempted to eat it the way that you mentioned is the original way to eat it. So we didn't use a fork and knife at all. We just used the whole lettuce leaves. That's what they said was one of the ways that it was originally touted as being served. We had to wash our hands like 18 times, but it was messy. It was good. It was, it was messy. <laughs> and the smaller pieces were definitely easier to put in your mouth. The bigger pieces, it was like, do I fold it like a taco or yeah. <laughs> how do I get it there in There was some mouth? folding action that happened. It was, a yeah, so that was a little strange. So perhaps I would use normal size lettuce next time. <laughs> anyway, overall, not too bad. Yeah. So 7.5 and an 8. All right. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support our podcast, the best way to do that is through sharing these episodes with your friends and family. Once again, this has been Who Ate It First. I'm Kendall Rehnquist. And I'm Logan Rehnquist. It has been delicious. <laughs> <laughs>